welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And I have been waiting for this episode for a long time. We are doing wines of Arizona. Arizona is absolutely on the scene. Maynard from Tool has probably put the uh, wines of Arizona on the map. He is a, a you know rock star and he's very passionate about wine and Tool meaning the band. And so uh, he uh, he's definitely brought the most attention to the area in quite a while and there's a lot of write-ups and you can look him up and a lot of his wines. We're not doing his wines on the show today and we're doing one that was first on my radar. This is the first Arizona wine I ever had a decade ago, uh, Callahan, but we've got four wines. Um, from Arizona, different price points, different uh, varietals that I'm really excited about. We're gonna taste through um, all four wines. I brought out the big ass glass because this is a big occasion. Arizona's first jump on the Thunder Show, 536 episodes in, and really quality wines coming out of this area uh, of the country. A definite dark horse for becoming one of the substantial players um, in the US producing wines. 28 bonded wineries right now um, in, in uh, Arizona. And uh, I'm just kind of really excited about trying these wines. I've heard a lot about all, all of them, three different wineries, um, two of the same winery here and two different ones here, and I'll get into those a little bit. I also have some massive announcements. Michelle, who's coming in, brought, we brought in the lefty for Chris Mott, has a lot of linking up to do. Let's start with this. First and foremost, by far the biggest announcement of the day. Today is my dad, Sasha's 55th birthday. You've loved him on the Thunder Show. Michelle, let's link up a couple of his appearances. Um, dad is 55 today. I love him so much. Of course, he is, my, my parents are my heroes, right? I mean, my dad was born in Russia and came to this country at 22 years old, 23 years old in the late 70s with not a dollar to his name and with no language whatsoever. And he hustled. You know, I love to talk about hustle, but that man hustled. And, uh, you know, by the early to mid 80s, we were more than a middle class uh, family. And I had Nintendo in 1986 and we got to America in 1978. So that puts it in perspective. So I just, uh, I, I love you, Dad. Happy birthday. And we're going to link him up, Michelle. We're going to blow up his inbox. He doesn't get that much email. So let's link up his email. Vaniacs, I, you know, a lot of you already love him more than you love me. So that's good. But, you know, it would mean so much to me if you would send a happy birthday to my dad. Obviously, there is no Wine Library TV without him. And so um, please do that. I think he gets a kick out of it. Um, you know, and uh, I appreciate that. So four wines today, um, all from Arizona. And this is probably the biggest announcement show in a while. I mean, we got my dad's birthday, and now I want to announce the secret pack. And all of you have been waiting to taste along with me. There are four wines, I think. Hold on, just make sure. Four wines in the next secret pack. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Four, one, six, seven, five. I gotta run away because I don't know the price of the new secret pack. Hold on one second. I should have went with my gut. I should have went with my gut. I knew it. It is $74.99 for four wines. Thank you, Michelle. And it is free shipping, though, which is a nice coup. Big savior for you guys. Four wines, $74.99. That's a markdown of the four wines as well. Individually, there's some serious wines in this secret pack. Taste along with me. We've created a new secret pack page. Michelle, link it up. And it's also gonna be on the right side of the website all at the bottom for a while, things to check out. We're gonna always keep it there. Talking about our secret packs. If you've never done one, I've been bombarded. The Vaniacs are a really clever bunch. You guys have already bought 35 of them. We haven't even announced it. It's in the system, so good job by that. Um, we've got a couple hundred of them, but here's the big deal, my friends. In one of the secret packs, in one of them, will be a certificate for a free cruise trip for one person, free. Michelle, that's crazy. So let's link up the Thunder Cruise if you don't know what we're talking about. We have a cruise that's coming up in uh, April of next year. Really excited about it. Um, and uh, one of you who buys a secret pack will actually get an entire cruise ticket for free. Not your airfare, but the cruise. So I'm excited about that. So, secret pack. We're going to be tasting the secret pack on the 29th of September. This gives you all plenty of time to gobble them up and have them ready. I'm doing a little bit of traveling as well. That's why I so laid out. Um, we are also going to announce another thing. I know a lot of blah blah in the beginning, but there's a lot to cover. We haven't covered a lot of things in a while. The super tasting is coming up October 13th and 14th because a lot of you guys are flying out to come to the super tasting. We are doing another open house party on the 11th. 
of September. I will be, of, of October, excuse me. I'll be giving you more information, but Saturday, October 11th, here at Wine Library, I will tape a live show in front of all of you. We'll do a whole huge thing, big food tasting last, last time, tons of wine, probably an out of the area uh, tasting as well, a couple dinners. We're gonna blow it out party style, VIP P. Diddy style, like we did last time. And then you could stay that Sunday, do another Vaniac, maybe in the forum, somebody will start something for Sunday. And then Monday and Tuesday, the super tasting. It's Columbus Day weekend, let's party. We're gonna have a great time. Open house, secret pack, cruise tickets, dad's birthdays, we've covered it. Let's get into Arizona wine, Michelle. The first one, Dos Cabinas, uh, Cabizas, uh, 2006. Uh, Viognier, this wine rolls in at 18 US dollars. It's 86 points. Uh, uh, Robert Parker, who's covered some Arizona wines recently, this does come uh, from the Soita uh, area, which is the only AVA in Arizona. Let's get a little pour, a little rinse first. Dos Cabezas. Good little winery. We have a white and a red from them. Um, again, Dos Cabezas. Viognier, uh, 86 points Parker. 18 bones, let's give it a whirl. Nice golden color like the Hulksters, Golden Locks Wrestling 1985. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Nice oiliness coming through on the nose. I get a very interesting kind of development of like peaches with olive oil put on top of it. So a nice little hint of peach, a nice little olive oil component on top of this. I get a little bit of a dandelion kind of thing going on as well. So, a little floral, olive oil, peaches, kind of pretty. Let's give it a whirl. balance, good structure. It's a nice Viognier. It's got a nice acid backbone. I get a little heat on the back end. What's the alcohol? 13.5. I get a little too much for me. Just a hair. Not too bad. I continue to enjoy the uh, peach-like flavors that I get from this wine. I also get a little sugar cane action, which I find quite, you know, substantially fun. Um, nice long finish. Good acid. A little hot. Good wine. I think Parker did a nice job with his score. I'm a little bit more enthusiastic about it though. I'm gonna go 88 points, Altoon's number. 18 bones, pricey little for Viognier. Not a screamer, let's go out, Michelle, and hold hands and go out and buy it, but definitely a wine that I think brings some value to the table and definitely another textbook Viognier that shows you know, possibilities. I think this is a varietal that, just like in Virginia, might do some damage. Viognier becoming America's grape in a lot of ways. I mean, I'm excited about what's going on in Virginia. Like this Arizona thing, California. It's becoming quite interesting what this is doing. Doing well in Washington. It's a grape that has real potential to establish itself in the U.S. over the next 10 to 15 years. I like this. Let's move on. Dos Cabezas. La Montana. 2005. Petit Syrah Merlot blend. 65% Petit Syrah. 35% Merlot. 30 U.S. dollars. 87 points Robert Parker. Let's now with 28 wineries, that's big growth. Um, you know, just a handful a couple of years ago, a little back ways. So really excited about seeing more and more happening in this part of the country. I'm um, excited about what's going on in Baja, California, Mexico. I just think there's a lot of interesting, Texas, there's a lot of interesting things going on with really nice dark color. Let's pour a little bit out for all the vaniacs that we've missed through the years. And just the ones that were here and now have left, you know, we want them back. So if you know a friend or a, a foe that uh, used to watch a show, we want them back. Let's get them back with this Arizona show. Let's get this wine. Petit Syrah Merlot, 65-35. You know I love uh, a little Petit Syrah, big, big fruit. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Ah, the Oak Monster makes an appearance and he hasn't been here for a while. So that's kind of fun. I get a heavy dose of oak on the nose. I also get really ripe, 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 ripe black cherry. Did I mention it was ripe? It is. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of that on the nose as well. Dark wine, little shavings of dark chocolate coming through in the nose as well. Aromatically pretty interesting. A little milkiness that comes from vanilla, from the oak. Um, let's give it a whirl.
It's a little over oaked for me. Um, nice fruit, good balance, good ripeness, a little fruit bomby for me, but not horribly, but I'm not feeling it. Kind of basic, feel like I've tasted this wine before for 12 bucks, this is 30. I'm gonna give this wine a major pass. I'm gonna go 85 points on this. I think it's pretty boring. Um, just loaded with fruit, that's fine, but just not doing as much. I think the Viognier is far more exciting than this blend. You know, 85 is a good score, so I don't hate it. There's purity of fruit. I think there's potential here, but it's over extract, it's overdone. You know, maybe the oak is too new, maybe not. I don't know, just, just, I don't know, too bubbly, too basic. The kind of wine that I really like to stay away from only because I feel like I can taste this wine in Bogle Petit Syrah for nine to 12 bucks. You know what I mean? There's just a lot of wines out there, guys, that taste like this. Let's move on. Keeling Schaefer, 2006 Grenache, 15.5 alcohol content. There's 15% Syrah in this. This wine rolls in at 20 US bones. Um, let's see what's going on here. I think Arizona's potential is quite interesting. Um, some of the vineyards have shown a lot of promise. The Callahan wines that I've had in the past have been spectacular. I'm excited, I haven't had one in like five or six years, so I'm excited about that. Um, obviously, uh, the attention from Maynard is helping quite a bit. Um, um, Dos Cabazas uh, has been getting some hype. So there's some interesting stuff going on. A little light in color for a Grenache Syrah based wine. So that already has me a little bit concerned. You tend to see them a little bit darker from the Rhone or California. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Wild. Hold on. This is fun because we have not approached a wine like this in quite a while. I get a very heavy da dose of menthol. Like Mr. Clean floor uh, cleaner. I get a very interesting evergreen, like dentist component coming through on the nose as well. Very minty eucalyptus-y, kind of pepperminty, toothbrush kind of, you know, Mr. Clean, you know where I'm going with that kind of thing? Pine soul kind of thing going on. Fascinating. I mean, very aromatically minty overall. Wild. Very unusual. I also get a little dose of strawberry, but not that much. Kind of functified, very interesting. Not functified, I'm sorry, because that was always for barnyardy. Just kind of wild that it's like this. Let's give it a whirl. Good tannins. It tastes like cheap strawberry juice, if that makes any sense. That kind of throws me off. Kind of thin, you know. I do get some white pepper coming through, which I like actually, which is, it's a little thin. You know what this is? This is like a jigsaw puzzle. I think there's elements here. I think the strawberry juice, even though it's cheap strawberry juice, can be fine. I like the white pepper component. There's a little bit of greenness coming through on, as well on this wine. I like the layers. I don't like the texture. I don't like the mouthfeel. It feels kind of thin to me. But there feels like there's, some potential here, somewhere something can be done. It just feels awkward, it feels like maybe a little mismanaged or it just didn't come together they wanted, the way they wanted to. It feels like they had the right game plan but the other team punched them in the mouth and they didn't know how to figure it out. You know what I mean? It's like you're, you have a boxer, you have a great game plan, you get hit with that first uppercut and you didn't see it coming. The whole fight changes, like losing your quarterback in the first quarter, that kind of stuff. I'm not really feeling this wine. I'm going to have to score this wine 82 points. Um, I'm gonna give it a pass and definitely would not spend 20 bones on it. However, sneakily, there is potential to this wine. Let's move on. And the potential is that the components have some interesting different things going on. I feel like if you put it together, it could get kind of neat. Take a little rinse. Let's give it a pour. What we have here is the Callahan Padres. Uh, it is 39% Tempranillo, 31% Petit Verdot, 19% Cabernet Sauvignon, 11% Cabernet Franc, 2005 vintage. This wine rolls in at 28 US bones. And I'm uh, awfully excited to see what it's got bringing to the table. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Very complex nose, interesting. Uh, I get very small goose 
uh, excuse me, I'm very small um, cassis coming through. I get a little mulberry coming through on the nose. I also get a little like um, black berries coming through. I don't think that was some complicated word. I get blackberries. But there's an intenseness to this wine, a licorice, like melted down licorice kind of coming through as well. There's something I'm not pinpointing, which is frustrating because I'm usually pretty good at this, but there's something else here that I can't put my finger on. It's like that, like a little cave action. There's like a mustiness to it, kind of like cave, dark cave, Batman, dark night kind of thing going on. Let's give it a whirl, so maybe it'll come to me there. Mm. Mm. Good job. Um, black fruit, very focused, ripe and rich, coats my palate. You know, like just like completely takes over, um, which I'm very impressed with. It's got Bordeaux-like structure, um, but Spanish-like flavor, Tempranillo acting, you know, very nice, almost like Rioja meets Bordeaux with a little bit of like, a uh, little Australian love, you know, like very interesting, um, very interesting. Just give it one more shot. There was a wrestling tag team called the Can-Am Connection. I think it was Tom Zink and Rick Martel. This is like the uh, like the Fran Ain connection, like France and Spain come together and make a love child in Arizona. That's absurd, but that's what this tastes like. I like the structure of this wine, 28 bones. I think they knocked it out of the park. I like the secondary flavors, which are really loaded with a Basil meets um, pomegranate flavor profile. Nice long finish, great structure. If you're a classic red wine drinker, you know, meaning you drink a lot of Bordeaux and Rioja, I think you'll like this with a little New World love. Understand, you're gonna get a little more vibrance, a little more fruit, a little of that California sunshine coming down to Arizona. It gets a little hot down there. This is very bright and explosive, yet very masculine in its approach. It's like wearing a mustache. Not sure what that means. That being said, I think this is a 90 point effort. This is definitely the best of the bunch in my opinion. I'm gonna score it 90 points. 28 bones, not inexpensive. This is not your everyday wine. But if you want something special, and for some reason you care about Arizona in that stereo, a relative, a friend, you've been there, you've, you got engaged there, this is a very special wine and a very solid effort and very worthwhile. Screw top two, interesting, interesting play by Callahan for a $28 winery. $28 wine from Arizona is not like screaming and changing the wine world. Excuse me, it is changing the wine world. It's not like everybody wants that. And then to throw a screw top on that, these guys are really rolling dice. It gives me a little sense that they have a lot of confidence. They know what they've got in this bottle. And when guys like me that really drink a lot of different wine come across this wine, they've got to be impressed. I am partial to Petit Bordeaux. There's 31% in here. Maybe that's a little bit of what is making me like this wine. But I really think this is exceptionally good. It's got New World Cabernet Sauvignon-like flavors in a way, but then it's greeny and earthy. This is good, I like this. This has a lot of dimensions. Three, four hours of decanting, I think this can really open up and become a monster. Good show. Michelle, what do you think? You excited about Arizona? You wanna go, you wanna hop in a plane and go drink Arizona wine? Not quite. Happy birthdays uh, to Colin Komar, uh, belated to Mark uh, Fusco and to Jay Glock, oh doctor, and uh, happy anniversary to Dominus. Um, again, recapping, um, we've got the secret pack on sale now. Link it up, Michelle, you can buy them. Um, one person in there gets a ticket to the cruise that comes in October, let's link up the cruise. Um, and also, we've got the super tasting coming October 13th and 14th. We're gonna do the open house here, live taping of Wine Library TV, October 11th, and lots of other fun stuff, I'll get more details soon. Other than that, question of the day, have you ever had an Arizona wine? And what was it? And if not, what do you think about when you think about Arizona? I want everybody answering. It might be a good idea. You, with a little bit of me, were changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.